Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I am Caillou Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's get to the chase. Today, we're going to talk about friendship. That's right. We're going to talk about being friendly, making friends, keeping friends, and how to be a good friend, and even the evolution of friendships. Whew, that's a handful. Mohammed Ali once said, Friendship is not something you will learn in school. But if you haven't learned the meaning of friendship, you really haven't learned anything. I think that's true. We can all agree that friends are important. Am I right? Someone that you can talk to, someone you can count on, someone that understands you. Today, my guest is a lot of things. But most importantly to me, he is my friend. The one, the only, former mayor, Dean Esposito. Having grown up in Danbury, Dean Esposito attended Danbury Public Schools and graduated from Danbury High School in 1979. Dean was elected as city councilman for five terms of served as town clerk from 2003 to 2005. In 2016, Mayor Mark Bounton named Dean Esposito his chief of staff, a role he continued for Mayor Joe Cavo. He is married to Sharon, his wife of 30 years, and have two adult children, Chase and Chloe. Dean, welcome to Caillou Talks. It is so great to see you, my friend, and spend some time with you again. It's great to see you, my friend. Uh, We haven't seen each other in a few weeks, but it's always nice to see you and your entire family. Uh, How's Sharon Sharon doing? Sharon's doing pretty good. You know, we had an exciting last few months. We had the election in November, and then we traveled a little bit and uh, went to see our children, one is in um, Miami, my son, and my daughter is down in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. So, so we got to spend time with them. So do you have any time to like, do your kids like, what are your kids doing right now? What do you think they're doing right now? Right this minute? Yeah. I just- well, my son is working. He works for the federal government. He's an air traffic controller. And we got uh, the opportunity to hear him on the computer every day when he's working because it's uh, direct as- access to the to the airport, believe it or not. So he's an uh, air traffic controller, and he's moving the planes around. And my daughter is out on a walk. I just spoke with her earlier. She's doing very well. She's married now one year, and her husband, Jay, and, and her are doing very, very good. So what's been your biggest inspiration in your life? Well, I'd have to say my father originally. My father was uh, – uh, we have eight children. Eight. I have six sisters and a brother, so there were, it was a – a big time in our lives growing up together and my mother. But my father uh, basically gave me some guidance as far as putting public service together for uh, living in the community. And I, he once told me, if you're going to live here and raise a family here, uh, you might as well get involved here. And that's what I did. So his words were, were uh, a lot of wisdom for me. Uh, he passed away a few years back, but uh, I always have him in my heart and in my mind when any, any time I do anything. And I think between him and my mother it gave me a, a good foundation to to make friends like you. And now that we're talking about friendship and to treat people with respect and uh, try to make friends with everyone you could. What are the most important qualities for a good friend? Well, uh, that's that's a good question. I mean, it's something that I think when people find a good friend, someone that they can count on, someone that's loyal, that will always be by their side and through thick and thin, and we both know what that means, good times and bad times. If you have a good friend that you can call on, which I've been blessed to have uh, quite a few good friends, but some of those are much closer than the others, and they they give me an opportunity to to vent if I'm in trouble with uh, things on my mind or if I'm not feeling well. And, um, you know, it's like when we all get together. You know, we get to see each other, and the first thing we do is what? Smile, right? Because we always... uh, you're always on my mind and your family and, you know, friends are, are the type of people that you think about and that you want to do uh, what's right for them and they do what's right for you. As you know, I'm currently in sixth grade. This is a question I commonly ask mo- lots of people in my interviews. Probably one of the most important questions in the world. How was middle school for you? <laughs> middle school was a great time for me. I did... Uh, I actually went to St. Peter's uh, down on Main Street, a Catholic school, and then I ended up at Rogers Park. And Rogers Park at the time was called Rogers Park Junior High School. So I went to that school. It was basically middle school, and I began to play sports. I played football for Rogers Park and then at Danbury High School. 
but I made a lot of good friends through sports. So for me, uh, I made my way through school. I wasn't a top A student, but I was pretty good athlete. But it was a, a good time in our um, in my life as far as you know being able to go to a public school and and, and make a lot of new friends. That's part one. Now it's time for part two: the deep questions. Deep. Talk to me about the lessons you learned. What does friendship mean to you? Friendship, I, I, I think it's just uh, it's a good quality of life with people that you've gotten to know and that you can depend on and that are loyal to you and you to them. I think uh, those that don't have friends, and I don't think there's many people, but it, it, they're losing out because friends are people that can always uh, you can depend on and uh, kind of build your your uh, your spirit up when you need it or you help them in the same way. So for for me, uh, as I said, I got a, quite a few friends, but there are those that are just a little bit closer than the others. So I really appreciate them uh, more than I can say. So I have another question. What is it? How do you like ketchup? <laughs> oh, there you go. I put ketchup on my ketchup. Well, there's only one person I know that does that, and I'm being interviewed by him, and that's you. But I do love ketchup. You know, back in the old days, my grandfather went to a restaurant, ordered a bowl of hot water, and the ketchup was on the table. He had salt and pepper, put the ketchup in the hot water, and had a bowl of tomato soup. Do you believe that? (laughs) It was a fancy restaurant, so he was a jokester. But ketchup is one of my favorites, too. So what inspired you to love ketchup? I think the French fry inspired me to love the ketchup because once I put that ketchup on my French fries, I was no going back. I loved it more than ever. The reason why I love ketchup is I like I got this ketchup. I was like, what is this? I dipped it. Um, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that true? So true. And you know, I I violate the first rule of eating a fine steak. I put ketchup on it. And my friends, oh, you got to be kidding me. You're putting ketchup on your steak? That's, so that's that, my dad like will it. not like you for that. See? My dad, Thomas, will not like you for that. <laughs> I can already hear, hear their muffled laughter right now. So, <laughs> you see, there's this, that reminds me of a story. Like, one time I put ketchup on my pizza at school. And then Ryan's like, ew, gross, get out of the table. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, but out, Ryan, this is how I eat. Deal with it. There you go. Everybody has their own flavors and tastes. And then I'll say, I'm not going down for this, Mom. So that's why I just, so that's why I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> you have a powerful example of friendship in your life. With Mayor Mark, you went from political opponent to serving as his chief of staff to running from and becoming mayor after him. Tell me more about the friendship and what you learned from it. Well, like I said, uh, we went to junior high together, or actually in high school together, Mayor Mark and I. He was a couple grades behind me. I got to know him very well in school. Uh, he was a little younger and a little smaller, and he and uh, he'd admit it to you and me, and all of those he talked to uh, that he could be a little bit of a wise guy, right? So unfortunately, some of the other kids uh, started to pick on him a little bit. And I help, I stepped in because I didn't like bullies and I didn't like uh, especially picking on a smaller person. So I stepped in and uh, resolved the issue, and uh, we became uh, really close close friends. His sister uh, was in my class, uh, Nancy. So from that point on, we were always close. And uh, obviously, he was being a couple of years younger than me. Uh, he was in the class uh, below us, so I got to know him pretty good. And throughout the years, I had you know, interaction with him and his family because his father was just a mayor at one time and my father was a state representative. So we kind of crossed paths. We were both born and raised in Danbury. So to have a friend like Mark uh, is is a blessing because we got to know each other much, much better as the years went past. And then he really stepped up when I was in a, a position that I needed a new job. And he called me up and he offered me a job with the city as weights and measures. And uh, uh, got me involved in the city, and I uh, stayed involved in politics at the same time. So that's how our paths crossed mostly in, in the last few years. But in the beginning, it was uh, pure friendship to start us off. How important are quality friendships when it comes to being successful in life? I mean, there you go. It, and just part of that last answer. We had good, good, solid friendship growing up. And then when we got into the business world or his, uh, you know, 
for him it was political, but he became mayor, and then he stepped up, called me, and gave me an opportunity to get involved as well. So do I think that he would have called me if we weren't friends? I don't know, maybe, but uh, I think our friendship was something that he knew that he could count on for me to represent the city because when I w- at that point when I was representing the city, I was representing Mark Bowton, the mayor. So uh, it was a, an opportunity for me to, to get involved, but uh, I think our friendship was what brought us together um, in, in city government and, and helping run the city. How do your friends impact your life? Well, my friends are, as I said earlier, there. there's an opportunity that if I have, if I'm not feeling good about something, I can call them. They can co- come and help me out. We spend time together at parties and different family events. So an impact of, of a close personal friend is almost as like family. I mean, some of the friends that you might have and your family have, you can consider just like family. And I, I was blessed to have a lot of those types of friends. I have a big family, as I said, six sisters and a brother and all my nieces and nephews. But uh, when uh, your friends are involved, it's just a little bit different than a sister or brother. It's someone that you can really talk to and and somebody that you can really count on when you need them the most. How do you make an impact in your friend's life? Well, I try to do as best I can. If, uh, you know, I have a a couple of friends, uh, a couple of my older friends passed away and I truly miss them, but they were very impactive in my life. And they showed me a, a pathway on how uh, a friend should act. So as far as uh, I'm concerned, my close friends can always count on me to be able to be there for them when they need it most. If it's in a good times or in bad times, it, and if I don't even see them, I might not see my friends for, I have one very good friend I haven't seen in two years, but as soon as I do see them, it's like we, we haven't been apart for a day. So those are the types of friends that you can really count on. And I hope that they do the same, count on me when they need me the most. So final question, what is your biggest accomplishment? What are you most proud of? Well, my biggest accomplishments is sitting in the other room. I got to marry my wife, Sharon. I had my daughter, Chloe, my son, Chase, and being part of an Esposito family. You know, I always say when I was old enough to realize uh, what being an Esposito meant, I was I couldn't tell you how proud I was because I have a really solid family that grew up in Danbury. But I mean, overall, I think uh, my personal best accomplishment was uh, pursuing the seat of the mayor. You know, I was town clerk, I was chief of staff, and then I be, I ran and became the mayor of the city that I was born and raised in. And you, I couldn't tell you what an honor that is. Each and every day, even though I'm not mayor right now, it's something that I'll never um, forget. And I'll always have. And it was a, uh, an accomplishment for me because I think um, most people would want to do something like that in the town that they grew up in. We did a lot of positive things. So I think that if it was a, an accomplishment in that manner, I think being mayor was one of the biggest ones as well. Dean Esposito, thank you so much for being with me on Caillou Talks. I knew that when I decided to have an episode about friendship, that you were the guy to talk to. You have been a friend to me and a friend to many. It is so clear that your career has been shaped by friendships and your ability to connect with people in so many different ways. Don't get me wrong. School is important. But Muhammad Muhammad Ali makes a good point. Without learning the meaning of friendship, you haven't really learned anything. Because if you don't have the people you can trust, people you can rely on, people you can connect with, what do you really know? Even as a kid, I know that relationships can be tricky. They take work and effort, and it's important to make sure there's a two-way street. You have to be there for others if you expect them to be there for you. Good friends are always worth it. So remember to follow the golden rule. When it comes to friendship, be open to meeting new people, and always trust your heart. That's it for now. Thanks for joining me, Kai Ninja, on Kai Talks. <laughs>